anybody who's watching this, stick out your hands in front of you like this. And when I say the word pomegranate, raise your left hand or your right hand, okay? Pomegranate. Some of you raised your left hand, some of you raised your right hand, some of you are still confused, it's okay. But if I had your head in an MRI machine, I would know before you did which hand you were gonna raise. Your brain decides and then tells you. So much of what we do is on autopilot. Maybe 90% of our decisions are happening because of assumptions and beliefs that we've accumulated over, over our own history. And this is at the heart of the entrepreneurial mindset. What are those deep beliefs, those deep assumptions that anchor our, our daily decision making that have to do with entrepreneurship? And this turns out to be really important. If you'll see this slide here, it tells you a little bit, it gives you a, a look at that. I'm Norris Kruger. I live in Boise, Idaho. Uh, I've been studying this stuff for way too long that I'm a recovering tech entrepreneur turned academic expert on entrepreneurial cognition, and now I'm kind of a social entrepreneur and economic developer. Uh, and I'm really, that, the, the Kinique project has tremendous uh, potential here, and I'm, I'm really happy to, to be here. At the core of what we're talking about is we're not training memories, we're training minds. We're not teaching to people, we're not teaching them about entrepreneurship, we're teaching them how to think like entrepreneurs. Um, Going from learning passively to active doing is really important here. And one of the things they asked me to talk about uh, through Connect is to take the example of what the be very best of the best of the best programs are doing. What are the top 1% top doing? And that's really important because it's not that they're doing more of things necessarily or spending more money or that they are doing things very differently, and this is what they do differently. They obsess over developing the mindset. They don't always say it explicitly, but implicitly, at least implicitly. This is not about learning stuff, it's not learning skills, it's learning how to think like an entrepreneur. And it involves immersion, it involves engagement with the ecosystem, it involves uh, a lot of critical thinking, and it requires a lot of action that the second part is this deep co-immersion with the entrepreneurial community. We talk about the entrepreneurial ecosystem, but we universities in particular are really bad at getting out and engaging with the community in ways that the community thinks is important. L take the best training programs in the world like Steve Blank's Lean Launchpad, Techstars uh, Incub uh, Accelerator, Startup Weekend, in three days, they're doing it. This is how, why these programs work so well. And they understand it. The best technology commercialization programs, you look at what Ch they're doing at, at, at Chalmers or Twenta and, or at Babson or Stanford, you're seeing exactly these kinds of things. You go to Boulder, Colorado, you go to Silicon Valley, and yeah, everybody seems to have the entrepreneurial mindset. You go, wow, it's like in the, in the air. But the reality is there are things going on on a constant basis. There are, if you watch it from this perspective, there are all these things going on that help build and reinforce expert entrepreneurial thinking. And it's not something we're necessarily aware of, but our programs need to be embracing that because the, as I said, the, the A++ entrepreneurship programs in the world, the people, you shouldn't want to be in the top 10%, you should want to be in the top 1%. This is something you should uh, be aspiring to. What do they do? But again, focus on the mindset, uh, embrace the ecosystem deeply, invite it into your, in this, not just immersion, but co-immersion. Um, this is important. Take the example of Lean Startup. This is one everybody, a lot of you have heard about. If you think about, it, yes, this validating, testing assumptions iteratively, testing those deep beliefs about your market, your product, um, and your and your venture, but what happens if you do that? It starts changing people at a deep level. It is changing that that mindset in an important way. Think about uh, Startup Weekend and and TechStars. Total immersion. Maybe one is three days, one is six weeks. That there it's twenty four seven immersion in action. Working on their business model, working on their prototype, and and so on. Intense peer support, personal reflection. 
and immersion, immersion with the ecosystem. That they've got, you know, what is going on here? And, we, and I think what we want to do is, is build our programs to address that and do that obsessively. There's a Copernican revolution going on in, entrepreneur, in entrepreneurship that centers around this focus on the mindset and this focus around the ecosystem. And the great news is for the practitioners, if in Copernicus's day, if he, they all, everyone said, yes, the sun goes around the earth. And then as soon as he published his book, everybody goes, no, 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 yes. Oh yeah, it makes perfect sense. That we're at a point in time where the practitioners are saying, yes, this is how we should be doing it. The people who are experts at, at educational psychology are saying, well, duh, kindergarten teachers figured this out 100 years ago. But thinking about this, this, this change in understanding how humans learn important stuff, this, how do we really learn that is nothing to do with, very little to do with what we, we, we see in the classroom. Again, practitioners are leading the way. We've got all sorts of tools. I'm gonna to go out on a limb and predict that this internet thing is gonna last. You heard it here first, that, that there are so many tools and so many, many resources out there uh, and learning how to use those uh, effectively. And the fourth piece of that is, is something that we've known for 20 some years, but Malcolm Gladwell wrote this book called Outliers that really got it out in the, in the human consciousness. Um, is that this is about, isn't learning about moving from, trying to move from a more novice mindset to a mind, more of the mindset of an expert. And yes, it may take 10,000, 20,000 uh, hours of deliberate practice, but isn't this what we're trying to do? If we are not moving students from a more novice mindset to a more expert mindset, why are we even doing this? And this is true entrepreneurship or any other kind of domain. That, I'm gonna give you a little homework, something to think about while we're going forward, is that everybody has their own conception of what the mindset is and what's important about it. Well, pick one thing, what is the one thing? How would you know? If I put a gun to your head, said you gotta tell me, what makes this person have an have that expert entrepreneurial mindset and this person doesn't? If there's one thing that you could look for that you might see that would differentiate them, what would that be? And then step back a second and say, how would I change that? How would I help that person to think more expertly? And we're gonna come back to that. William Butler Yeats, the Irish poet, and he, he always, he gets credit for it, though he said, Plutarch said it first, but there are two ways of thinking about learning. Learning, in, learning is not about filling a bucket. It is about lighting a fire that are you filling the bucket? Or are you changing how they see the world? And that's, at the essence, really important. And again, the educational psychologist, cognitive developmental psychology has been looking at this for 100 years. But there's behavioristic and constructivistic. Behavioristic is filling the bucket. That change, you know, that lighting the fire and letting the learners not only fill the buckets, but decide what the buckets are, is the constructivistic model. And this is how humans really learn. And how do you learn? The learners create their own buckets that through personal reflection, through peer support, expert mentoring, and focusing on authentic questions. Can you think of something better uh, suited than entrepreneurship to this notion of important questions? If you ask if you're asked a question that really matters to you, that you really want the answer to, it's almost like your IQ is doubled. Your ability to solve the problem and solve it effectively goes up dramatically just because it's a question you want to know the answer to. Another uh, important facet here is Epictetus' great quote. Experience isn't what happens to you. It's what, what, what you do with what happens to you. Part of our process as an educator in all this process is helping them take away the right lessons, whatever happens. Can they take a good lesson away from a bad experience? Sure. Can they take a bad lesson away from a good experience? Yes. That this is the power of their, not just their personal reflection, 
of their peers, of expert mentoring, but also us as managing the educational pro learning process is making sure people take away the right lessons that change how those deep beliefs and how they think. And this is a, a way to graphically describe it. You're moving from novice to expert. We can say, here's what I know, and that changes. Yes, experts probably know more than novices, and what they know is very different. But what's really important is that how that knowledge is structured, that changing the, changing the buckets, not just what's in the buckets, but, but how they're structured. And those depend on those deep anchoring beliefs because this is, this is stuff that guides our, this automatic processing in our brain. How do we change those deep assumptions? And the, the buzz phrase is critical developmental experiences. What are the activities that we, we can do to change that deep, that deep belief, which then changes how you see yourself as an entrepreneur. That it changes your script, your map, uh, your schema, what, certainly your mental prototype of who you are as an entrepreneur. What are the, how, do we, how do we guide and reinforce this process? And again, this is, this is what the best programs in the world do. Uh, if you want to look a little farther, I have friends of mine, I've worked, simply applying the basic sort of educational psychology 100 to the entrepreneurial education question and finding that most of what we do is in that left column, the behavioristic, the bucket filling column. Unfortunately, most of what we do, even in good entrepreneurship programs, falls there. But the three other models, the sort of three flavors of constructivistic learning, social learning, that's, that's peer centric. Situated learning where you're embedded in the community, you know, it's, you're engaged in the community. This is the ecosystem embedding part. And existential learning, which are these authentic, important questions. Uh, just quick, if you notice, uh, this actually is empirically based, that if you look at the bottom, that practice actually, act, actually doing things, and including teaching other people, is how people learn and retain immensely. So what should we be doing? There's one way to look at it. We focus on learning stuff, skills, knowledge, whatever, and ultimately we judge the program. Have we improved the intentions of the students? Are they, have they greater intent to start a business, for instance? Well, guess what? A good entrepreneurship program, their intent and their self-efficacy actually go down for a while early on in, in their training because they're getting this reality check. Don't worry, it comes back. But we should be working at, like, looking at not skills and knowledge, but changing the mindset, these deep beliefs. And fundamentally, just let's fo laser focus on how do we move from novice to expert? What are the critical developmental experiences that get us there? And for moving from intent, let's focus on action. And in fact, if you want the best way to improve intention is by actually acting. The more you do something, the more your intent to, do, to, to keep doing it goes up. This is a, a sort of a graphic of a couple different looks at how, this, from an instructor perspective, how we look at it. That, again, more th again, repeating things we've said before, that action before thinking, learn the right lessons, embedded in, in a supportive ecosystem, both in terms of the class and in terms of the entrepreneurial community. So let me come back to a little bit more uh, to, to the homework assignment. Remember that one thing I said, okay, here's one thing that is going to be different about an expert entrepreneurial thinker versus a novice. And how can we change it? And I want you to send your ideas. My email is listed below. I want you, as soon as you, as soon as you, as you watch this, sit down, type it up, and email it to me. I would be fascinated. I will share it with the Kniek uh, community. I think a tremendous opportunity for all of us to learn from each other. How do I say this uh, uh, diplomatically? I probably know more about this than, than anybody else in the field. And I still only know this much. So please join the adventure. Uh, research opportunities are, are a gold mine, not just the teaching side great opportunities to engage with your local entrepreneurial community. Here's my email, my Twitter handle, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+. Um, I w let's keep the conversation going. Kanik is all about the community. Now, one final thing. 
that if this were a live audience, somebody by now would have raised their hand and said, God damn it, Norris, what do you think is a key facet of the entrepreneurial mindset? And it just so happens that, that, that Klaus Seller has uh, insists that I answer this question. So what's, what does an entrepreneur mean to you? Um, the short answer is entrepreneurs make cool shit happen. That this is about creating value for others, delivering it, and if you're lucky, you get paid. That it's all about identifying value. When you say the word opportunity to me, that this is an opportunity to create value for somebody else. That I am creating their opportunity. And that's the essence of being entrepreneurial. This is not being opportunistic. This is about creating value. And this is something that doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a commercial setting. It can be a social venture. It could be anything. But it's not, entrepreneurship is, is certainly, is not about the Benjamins. It's not about money. It's not about starting a business. It's about making cool stuff happen. So go out there and help your students make cool stuff happen. And do it yourself. <laughs>